Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we're going to begin to dive into the capabilities that we have with the calculator in doing statistical analysis. Uh, and basically statistical stuff is, is just a fancy word that means that you have a lot of data, uh, raw data, raw numbers in other words, and we're going to use the calculator to manipulate and play with that data. We might graph the data. Uh, so we'll use the graphing capabilities to look at the data. We might do analysis on it to find out what the uh, mean value of that data is, what the standard deviation is, or a number of other things that we can do as well, regression analysis. Uh, so what we're going to do in this section is first learn how to input the data into the calculator, and in the next section we'll actually learn how to play around and, and do things with it. Alright, so everything in this section is going to be dealing with raw data, raw numbers of some kind. Um, there are a million examples why you might need to do this kind of thing. Uh, certainly your test problems will tell you, you know, what, what it is you're trying to do. But just as a practical example for the purposes of teaching you what we're doing here, uh, I like to think of grades in a classroom. Uh, gra you know, student grades in other words. Maybe there's 20 kids or 30 kids in a classroom and we all get a different grade. Um, some of us are going to get in the 90s, some of us are going to get in the 80s, some of us are going to get in the 70s, and some are going to be lower. And so that's statistical data. We might want to list that data and plot that data and find out how much of us are lying in the A and the B and the C range and what the spread is, what the standard deviation is on the students, you know, how far apart are the students from one another and what the mean value of those grades are. So it's something we can all easily wrap our brains around. So that's what we're going to center this section around. All right, now remember when we uh, entered a matrix earlier, we went into the, the matrix editor. But if you remember, there was actually something else in there uh, that let us enter data, and that's what we're going to be doing now. So to enter st statistical data list, you go to the apps menu. So let's go to the apps menu right here. Now on this calculator, the way I have it set up on the screen, I see a date data slash matrix editor here. But depending on the flavor of the TI-89 you have, you may not actually see this screen. When you hit apps, you might see a menu pop up. But anyway, when you look at it, there should be an entry somewhere on the screen when you press apps that says data slash matrix. So go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and notice we've already used the matrix entry capabilities already. So now we're entering data into the calculator and that's why you know it's all lumped together. So we have a couple of options. Normally you're either going to be creating a new data set, which is just a new listing that you'll name, uh, and that's what we're going to do here. But in a few minutes, we'll be able to, once we have something stored, you can of course open it and, and edit it and modify it later. So let's go ahead and create a new guy now. And again, your menu might look slightly different, but there'll be a place for you to select new and open. So go ahead and hit new. So here we are taken to the data entry. Now if you recall back from the matrix area, we were always taking this and flying this out and selecting matrix. Well here we're going to be leaving it on data. All right, so that's basically, think about it whenever you're entering statistical data, you leave it in data. All right, now you have the option to create folders in this calculator and put your, your data in different places, but to be honest with you, I just leave it in main, which is like the central folder in the calculator. Uh, you need to give it a name. You could give it a one letter name or you can, you can give it a, a, a fancy name if you want to. Uh, so for now, just we're, gonna, we're just gonna keep things simple. We'll just put G for grades. All right, so this is what we're going to do. And you can, of course, type in more complicated things if you want to give it a much more fancy sounding, you know, descriptive name, which is not a bad idea if you're going to be entering a lot of different data. You might want to name it, you know, grades 1995 or grades 2010 or whatever year it is. All right, so we filled everything out. We've got a name and all that good stuff. We hit enter. Okay, go ahead and hit enter one more time, and we're taken into the data entry editor. Now it looks basically like entering a matrix. I mean, almost exactly like entering a matrix, except that it says data up there to remind you that we're, we're really entering data. So once we type the values in and, and go back to the stack, we're not going to have a square bracket matrix created. We're going to have a construct in memory that's just going to be a list of numbers, whatever we type in. All right, so here we have column one, column two, column three, and if you go over, you can see more columns. So the thing to remember here is most of the time in statistical stuff, you're going to be just entering a list of numbers. So like if I had the grades in the classroom, in a minute we'll do it, but you could uh, just enter the grades going all the way down. If you have 20 grades, you list them going down in a, in a list, in a column. 
All right. But what if you had, just as an example, what if you had two different classes? Like if you're a school teacher and you have two classes, well, you might list class number one grades here and you might list class number two grades over here and you might list class three grades over here and maybe in column four over here you might list you know the age of the student or something like that uh, so you might have multiple different columns of data that that are related to one another but distinct and you might want to visualize those different columns of data separately or whatever so later on we're going to be doing that kind of thing but just remember that's why there's multiple columns here the most of the time you're just going to be entering one column maybe you're measuring the temperature outside over a period of a month the high temperature so you'll have 30 days of temperatures and they'll just be listed right here so just for the sake of argument let's say we have this this class and let's say we have you know 95 this guy got a 96 this third student got a 95 this next student got a 94, this next student got a 90, uh, lots of people got an 89. I'll we'll go ahead and put three people that had an 89. Um, then we had some people with 88, two people with 88. Uh, let's do three people with 82. Well, let's do four people with 82. Okay, and then we had a couple of people that got C's at 74. And we got another few people at uh, 86 and 92 let's say a couple people 92 and the really bright guy in the class got 100 okay so even though I sort of subconsciously put these in a certain order you can see I really didn't follow a specific order because when I got down to 74 here I entered uh, larger numbers here so I just want to make sure you know these are not already pre-sorted because in a minute we're going to actually get the calculator to sort the data for us alright so these are more or less randomly inputted uh, uh, randomly inputted data and notice that we have the, uh, the the numbers on the left to help us be able to visualize how many entries we have so right now we have 20 entries so we have 20 students in our class let's just say so we'll go back up to the top and uh, congratulations you've created your first data set if you exit this guy uh, which we are going to do here in just a second it's already entered in you don't have to save it you don't have to like press a save button or anything like that once you enter the data you've already given the name which in this case is G for grades there's no real reason to press a save button or whatever it's already done so let's go ahead and do that let's hit second quit just to get out of this we'll go back to the home menu so everything's cleared out see there's nothing here now let's since we've entered the data which is basically your basic lesson in how to enter the data there might be a few things we might want to do to tidy it up prior to taking a look at it so let's go back into the apps menu and let's learn how to open a data set that we've already created so we'll hit open and here we, we're opening a data set in the main folder now notice there's a G here the reason there's a G here is because we've already stored a set of data with the name G if I had 10 data sets that I've named different names then this menu down here I when I fly it out I would have all of those listed here to be able to select the one I would like to open so the calculator knows what type uh, of data you have there and what their names are so it's just gonna list them here so I'm gonna hit enter to open this this G here data set and see it opens right back up just like in a computer alright so once you open something like this maybe you created this a week ago you might like to make a few changes um, so we're going to be trying to edit this guy here it's very very simple uh, if you'd like to change this 95 to a 96 just highlight it and just type 96 whoops 96 we'll hit enter and then we change that maybe this 94 maybe you want it to be a uh, 95 let's say maybe you made a mistake so we highlight it there 95 hit enter and it's changed so to make a change it's just like you might imagine you just highlight it and you just make the change and that's it now what if you realize that um, after you create this guy that you added a student to your classroom maybe uh, some transfer students came in or whatever you have three more students um, well you could certainly go to the end of the list and just ta tag them at the end that's fine but for whatever reason let's say you already had this guy sorted in ascending order and you really wanted to wedge it in right here so if you'd like to insert a row or a column to wedge some data in here in between these these places here you need to look at your little uh, menu that you have up here uh, so we have some things that we're not going to be dealing with but if we look over here utilities is F6 utilities so we are gonna hit second function up here F6 and we're going to see we can insert something so let's fly this menu out we can insert a, we can insert a cell we can insert a row 
we can ins insert an entire, entire column. So for now, let's just make it easy. We'll insert an entire row, hit enter there. Now it says undefined because it inserted a row. If I had multiple columns of data, then it would insert the row across the board. That's why we're inserting the row there. So I can change this guy to, you know, whatever, 93 and hit enter. Now the undefined disappears and I have my new data inserted there. So that was how we insert a row. Uh, but just so you know, I'm not going to do them all here, but if you go back into that F6 menu, insert, you can insert a column or you can insert an individual cell. When you insert an individual cell, it'll put a new cell there, but it just won't push all of the other column cells down uh, if you had multiple columns there. So it's, it functions basically kind of like a computer. All right, so we've learned how to enter data. Uh, we've learned how to open data up that we've entered. We've learned how to insert cells and things like that. Uh, now one thing that might be nice for you, you really should, you really can't change the C1, C2, C3, that's column one, column two, column three, but you can give a title to your column uh, up here. And so if you would like to do that, maybe to remind yourself what this is, uh, then you can just go above column one to this little blank space. There's these blank spaces up there. And then you can just type something in, like maybe you want to type in uh, class, so there's C, uh, and then we'll do L, L, uh, A, and we'll do S, S, and we'll just do the number one. So this could be class one. So we'll hit enter there. This could be class one. We could do class two and class three. This doesn't really do anything other than just put it there for you uh, to remind yourself what it is. So it's just a label. All right. Now, finally, we have all these numbers here, and we have like 20-something numbers here. What if we had an even longer list of 100, 100 temperatures in a, in, a, in, a, in a summer or something like that? It might be nice to, to get the calculator to automatically sort, you know, numerically what these guys are. Maybe you want to see the lowest grades first and the, the highest grades last or vice versa. So you can go back into this utilities menu, second function, and then up here. Uh, and then we have the ability to sort the column. So let's go ahead and hit sort column, and it's going to automatically put it where the lowest grade is first, and the highest grades are down at the bottom. So it doesn't have like a ton of sorting features, but it is handy if you just want to, if you want to uh, quickly be able to do that. It also works in, with alphabetical stuff. So if you had a bunch of words here, like a bunch of names of students, it'll it would sort it in alphabetical order. I am not going to demonstrate everything here, but I did want to quickly describe when you do sort column adjust all, what that means is maybe I had some additional data here, like uh, the student's last name, like, uh, you know, Adams, Gibson, Smith, you know, for the last name of the students. If you, uh, if you do sort column adjust all, then what's going to happen is you're going to sort the column that's highlighted, but all the adjacent columns are going to kind of stay tagged with the original guys, and they're going to be sorted as well. So if if uh, you know somebody you know James Smith or whatever got a 74 and his last name is Smith, if I do sort column adjust all, I'm going to rearrange the, the grades in a, in the order just like I have here, but their last names are going to travel with them so that I can kind of keep them together. That's basically what that is. So that's what the adjust all, uh, all part of it means. And then finally, exploring this menu a little bit, you can delete. You can delete a cell, you can delete a row, you can delete a column. So there are some features in here, and you can clear a whole column if you'd like. There are some features in here to try to make your life a little bit easier uh, when entering these guys. But honestly, those are sort of bells and whistles. Most of the time, you're not going to be doing geology in the field and entering a million different entries into this guy. Most of the time, you'll be learning about statistics. You'll be typing in some values for your problem or for your project. Uh, there won't be a million values. There'll be some values there for you to type in. And then ultimately, you're going to be operating on those guys, visualizing them in a graph, doing some analysis or whatever. So those are the things we're going to do in the next section. Here we just wanted to show how to enter the data, how to recall the data, and how to make some minor changes to the data once you've got it in your calculator. So go on to the next section, and we'll learn how to use this data to uh, you know, how to have the calculator operate on it and let us visualize it.